In the last le video lecture series, we talked about the idea of taxonomy or phylogeny, which is the process of trying to classify all life on Earth. And this is something that we have done as humans since the very, very beginning. And it's a very daunting task because uh, there's so much variety in life. And even the religious um, myth describes the early human as someone who goes out there in the world and tries to name these animals. And this is a process that recorded history has um, always uh, seen as a, as a feature of humanity. We've been interested in learning about the wonders of life and we have always been curious about it. From naming stars and constellations after, after animals to actually trying to sit there and classify all life on earth, humans have always been involved with this. And before we actually dig in and talk about taxonomy, let's review the concept of species or what is an actual species. Or in other words, how to differentiate the great variety of life. How, why is one thing different from the other and how can you tell that difference? Well, ecologists use four different ways or biologists use four different ways to classify a different species. Now, the most commonly used name historically has been to look at the morphological species test, which is basically... You can look at the difference between the animals and you see that they clearly look different and then you say there has to be a different species. The problem is that sometimes species are very similar to each other. So on the right side you see different species that you probably would never say it's the same species because you have a snake, butterfly, you know, you have insects, uh, but clearly different insects, you know. And so you have a mammal and those, so you see that there, there's no way it's going to be the same species. But when you look at the left side, you see birds, and some of them seem very different from each other, but some of them not so much. In fact, to the untrained eye, if you see them from far especially, you might not even think that they're different birds at all. And some of them are very, very, very similar to each other. Look at the cactus finch and the large cactus finch. Uh, the majority of people would not be able to tell the difference between the two of them unless they were actually labeled in the way that it is in this picture. So at times the morphological species test would fail. And then look at uh, dogs, for example. They're so, so different from each other in, in physiology, and yet they're considered the same species. And at what point you're talking about a race difference or a breed difference, and at what point you're talking about a species difference. Look at, for example, for human race. There are so many different looks uh, for humans, but if you're in... It seems that sometimes the race even has a different physical features uh, in terms of, uh, of, the, of the way the hair, the color of the skin, and even cranial structures look like. But at the end of the day, they're still the same species. And we even talked about in the genetics video lecture series how the actual difference in the amount of DNA in the, between the races of humans is very so, so minute. And that actually hints at another way that we actually do it today. But before we get ahead of myself, remember, species can be morphologically determined. And, but when it gets tricky, we use another thing that's called the ecological species test. Now, the ecological species test is actually just basically looking at the difference between uh, whether or not these animals can actually interbreed. So the idea is... Can the cactus finch and the large cactus finch actually have offspring with each other? And if they have offspring, is it possible for them to actually produce offspring that can uh, go on to also reproduce and have babies? In other words, think about a lion and a tiger. They actually can have babies and they form something that we call a liger. But that liger is in, unfertile. He cannot have babies. It, it, it fails in what we call the hybrid vigor. So even though they, they are similar enough that they can actually procreate, the, the product of this procreation is not uh, fertile, so it can no, no, pass, no longer pass on those genes. And that in itself makes that sure that the lion and the tiger are different species. So the ecological species test is basically the idea that two different species cannot interbreed successfully or even if they can to be successfully, their offspring must be able to do so as well. And for a lot of long time, that was the characterization that a lot of biologists used to actually classify two different species. But there's a problem with that because sometimes uh, the species will have different um, roles or sometimes even uh, they're going to be a sexually productive to species, you know, where species that don't breathe with anything else, they just kind of replicate when you're talking about a bacteria, for example. So at that point, how do you separate one bacteria from the other? Another suggested way to separate the species was the idea of the niche test. And remember how different species might have different niches. For example, the Cape May or wobbler feeds at the tips of the branches near the top of trees. And because of that, it has a different niche from the bay-breasted war war warbler, which lives almost in the same environment, 
But if it's on the middle part of the tree, and then you have the yellow rump robber, which fits on the actual bottom of the spruce tree. And because they have different niches, these animals are actually not going to be interbreeding, and they actually look kind of different, and act different, and therefore they must be different species. In other words, if you fulfill a completely different ecological niche, or a different role, or a different habitat in the environment, more often than not, you are a different species. And a great example of that is the actual polar bear versus the grizzly bear. They're very, very similar, in fact. But the fact that they have completely different habitats and niches uh, tends to indicate that they are going to be a different species. And if you actually did the ecological species test, you would end up finding out that the offspring is not as successful. So they must, therefore, be different species. But the ultimate way of classifying different species came with the 21st century, at the end of the 20th century, actually, is the idea of using molecular biology to differentiate between species. If you look at the actual differences in amino acid sequences in the proteins or, or in the DNA sequences which code for these amino acid frequencies, you actually see that sometimes a one member of a species is very, very, very similar to the member of other members of the same species, and that, in fact, what differentiates a species from another is having a substantial difference in the genetic code, which then de determines the phenotype that the animal will have or the organism will have. So that's how we actually separate um, bacteria, for example. We can do a DNA test and determine that that is a definitely a different strand of the bacteria. Uh, however, we still use things like morphological differences or the morphological species test. We do things like gram staining, and we look at the uh, molecular structures or the, the, or the organelles that different cells have to separate between them. And we still do the niche test. We see like, oh, this bacteria acts like this, this bacteria acts like that. It must be a different bacteria. And so, but ultimately, the best, best way that normal science, the normal 21st century advanced scientists tend to use is to actually do DNA sequencing or protein sequencing and actually figuring out is there enough substantial difference between these organisms to actually determine that they're different species. Look, for example, humans are about 95% difference from rhesus monkeys in the hemoglobin polypeptide sequence. So it's too much of a difference to consider humans and rhesus monkeys the same in terms, at least in terms of this particular gene that we're talking about. If you look at all genes in general, us and gorillas, for example, are about 98% the same. So it looks like it's very, very similar, but that would be too little for us to be able to successfully reproduce. And of course, we have different morphologies and different niches. So when you put it all together, we must be different species. Looking at a combination of these things is perhaps the best way to define what a species actually means. All right. I'll see you in the next video. We're going to talk about uh, the early development of taxonomy and what it actually is. See you guys then.